It's Wednesday, March the 19th, Budget Day. We're outside Parliament and I'm here with Justin Walker, who is the Campaign Director and just about everything else to do with the Bradbury Pound. Hello, Justin. Hello, Thank Sonia. Thank you for joining Hello. us today. Well, it's very exciting. We're, we're here in the lair, if you like, of the criminal bankers and the politicians who have sold their souls to the criminal bankers. And we know they are criminal bankers because they can create money out of thin air, charge interest, and when they transfer that nothingness across to the Treasury, we, the taxpayers, have to find £50 billion a year to pay the interest on something that never existed in the first place. Indeed. But the good news is we're here because exactly in 100 years ago, in that Palace of Westminster, they passed a rapid act through Parliament authorising the Treasury to issue debt-free and interest-free money based on the wealth of a nation to pay for the war and to prevent a run on the banks. In other words, the principle is that any sovereign nation, any sovereign nation in the world, can issue its own debt-free and interest-free money based on the wealth of its nation through its Treasury, not its central bank, through its treasury. Now that sounds wonderfully simplistic. It is. And anybody listening to this would say there has to be a catch. There's no catch at all. Absolutely none at so all. So why wouldn't they already be doing that because, then if, if it's interest free? Because the political parties are designed so the bankers can control whichever side of the party has been, whichever party has been elected to parliament. That is how the system is done. Now you say oh, there must surely be some sort of, uh, well, there must be something wrong with this idea. You can't have got the solution. Well, we have, because a government should regulate the cash flow into society to, in other words, to give the liquidity for a successful, booming, industrious and happy economy. In other words, we can, the money, this country is worth something in the region of 24 trillion pounds, Office of National Statistics. Now that means they can draw from that, they can draw interest-free, debt-free money to pay for the infrastructure, to pay for the vulnerable in our society, to look after our, to secure our defences so that we, our sovereignty is protected. In other words, our country could be industrious, it could be happy, you know, there's absolutely no reason at all. Why so can't they do this? Given that, well, it's an interesting question, why can't they? I think exactly. it's more of a, a, a willingness not to. Yeah. Um, but, but given that, so presumably you also believe that the whole idea of austerity is a nonsense. It is a total nonsense. Why? Why would, it, would they have created such an idea? Because it's all about control. The more people are in debt, you become debt slaves to the system. They've developed this system where all of us have given away our individual sovereignty and our national sovereignty to unelected, unaccountable people. If I said to you the Bank for International Settlements, I will tell you now that 99%, probably more than that, of the people of this country have never heard of the Bank for International Settlements. The Bank for International Settlements is the central bank where the Bank of England, the Federal Reserve and the other central banks in the world go to take their instructions. They control the money supply of the entire world. And it's all done by creating debt. It's all done by creating money out of thin air and then charging interest and plunging nations, communities and families into unlawful debt. And I emphasize the word unlawful because what's coming is a tidal wave that's going to sweep these idiots out of office. So you're saying that they are all complicit? They yes. are all complicit with the exception of about there's five brave MPs who actually signed an early day motion, Labour MPs, to actually restore the Bradbury Pound. But surely they're, they're, um, they're very limited on what they can actually do because you're talking about at this moment in time five MPs as opposed to 500 plus. They've only got to stand up and ask the right questions. Right. Look at me spouting, I'm a nobody, out here a nobody. But if I was spouting those questions in there, them there, the BBC, Sky and all the others who are refusing to take any of this seriously, yes. they would have to listen. Obviously what you're talking about is you're talking about a few benefiting, yes. aren't you? Yes. Can we put a name, a face, a direction to these people who are apparently benefiting from the lie that you say is an absolute lie about our debt? I think you just go into the City of London. Ask yourself about the City of London. Now if I said to you that the City of London had their representative sitting alongside our MPs, unelected, unaccountable, only accountable to the City of London, the finances and the City of London, you'd say, well, that can't be rude. true. But since 1570, there has been an office called the Remembrancer. And the Remembrancer looks after the interests of the City of London and basically acts as sort of like a party whip 
make sure the, the MPs do not say and do things which might endanger the, the, the City of London. Now, nobody knows about the Remembrance Centre. It's there if you know where to look. But people are too, unfortunately, dumbed down worrying about their football teams, worrying about who's won what programme on Saturday night and all the other stuff because by day they're chasing their tails, trying to avoid going into debt because people are basically becoming debt slaves. And people are not, if you like, haven't got the time to look what is really be happening. Sure, we're on the hamster wheel. How can people get involved and back your campaign? Right, go to the ukcolumn.org on site, UK column. Click on the Bradbury logo, this wonderful logo that was done by one of our people, and you will find all the places to go, what to do, leaflets to download. It, more and more is going to happen. I mean, today, for instance, just coming today, we were in a taxi, uh, and the taxi driver was right on board of us. Right. Absolutely on board. Each one, teach one. Exactly. Yes. And I just want people, it's so simple. I am not an economist. I want to emphasize this now. I am a fico. Uh, there's nothing clever about me, all right? Uh, if somebody had said to me three years ago, Justin, you'll be standing in front of cameras telling people about money supply, I would have laughed. But even I can understand it. If I can understand it, anybody here today can understand it as well.